All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy Furious video with Fat Phil. And in this video, we're going to be ranking the Empire faction. If you guys missed it, I did this with Rebels as well. So make sure you guys go ahead and uh, check that video out on the channel. I will also link it in the video description down below. Hopefully you guys enjoy or enjoying this series so far. I know this is the second iteration, but I think the Rebel video garnered a lot of interest. So hopefully you guys do appreciate that. Um, whoops. Sneak peek there. We're going to start with our King Wampa. You guys know the drill. Wampa wants Relic 8. He just needs you guys to get this channel to 5,000 subscribers. This channel gets to 5,000 subscribers. Wampa gets to Relic 8. It's that easy, guys. Again, I cannot thank you all enough for the love and support this channel has gotten. Let's continue to push the boundaries of what we can do to grow, and let's start talking about our empire. I will say here, at the end, there's two bonus characters, honorable mentions, so make sure you guys stick around. All right. Imperial Probe Droid is the worst one. We're just going to get it out of the way now. Outside of Datacrons, I've never seen this character seriously used. Um, yeah, he really just has... It's it's actually horrible because he's a like territory battle reward character. And all the rest of them are at least decent or have needed for something. Him, just horrendous. Terrible character. Um, yeah. Magma Trooper, Snow Trooper. F you know, their flexes for Aiden... But I think there's better options for that team. Um, I just think Iden Versio, as good as she is, I really think that they just don't add enough to that team per personally, right? I think there's other options that fit in there that maybe make it a little bit better. Again, you could put them there, but you know, but it's better, right? And, it's, and again, they're not needed for anything else, so they just kind of sit there. All right, Director Krennic is... This is sad. It really is sad. He's, he's missing a tag, and the tag he's missing is Imperial Trooper. This man led Death Troopers and doesn't have Imperial Trooper tag. Like, how does Piet, who was a fleet commander, get the Imperial Trooper tag and not Director Krennic? And let's be clear about something. Director Krennic is one of my favorite Star Wars villains. I he Ben Mendelsohn should was amazing as Krennic. I loved Rogue One and the part that Krennic played in it. Really wish he had a an Imperial Trooper tag because outside of that, he is terrible. Like one of the most useless characters. His entire kit is built around Death Troopers, but you never use Death Trooper with Krennic because Death Trooper actually is useful, so it's sad, but Krennic is here. He has a Sith Eternal requirement, or else he would probably be on par with Probe Droid. Alright, Gar Saxon and Imperial Super Commando are ahead of Krennic because they're pilots and because they have the Mandalorian tag. Guys, that Mandalorian tag we cannot sleep on. I think that we're only seeing the beginning of what that tag can do. And I just, I really think that Gar Saxon and Super Commando could have parts to play. So I want to get them on this list here. Their ship, the Gauntlet Starfighter, is very good. This is a pretty decent ship. And especially in the end game, having all the Empire ships unlocked is super important to split that fleet in two. All right, next is Stormtrooper. He is a decent tank. You know, you can use him in a couple of different, you know, scenarios with Item Versio, Lord Vader, he can be used. He does have the Imperial Trooper tag again, so that, you know, really benefits him. But outside of that, he doesn't have a pre-taunt, so that limits his uses. I think he's just an okay character, you know, kind of belongs right in this area where you'll actually use him more than like Gar Saxon and Super Commando, but, you know, just... Eh, you know, he's a meh character. All right, TIE Fighter Pilot. At one point, TIE Fighter Pilot was Mara Jade. That's that's the importance that he played. Uh, he had, you know, uh, tenacity down on his basic on a critical hit. His TIE Strike here could inflict ability block for one turn and buff immunity. And guys, he's a super fast character. He has 190 base speed, which is pretty quick. So he could gain a ton of turn meter inside of the Emperor Palpatine team. He was kind of the... He was that Mara Jade character where taking a lot of turns, always inflicting debuffs, just a, a really solid character at one point in time. Unfortunately, now has really just kind of gone that way, you know, backwards. Uh, the best use he has is that he's a pilot and needed for executor, so he's got to be on the list. Now, a step above him, we've got Death Trooper, Shore Trooper. While they're not Rex for anything, they do have the TIE Reaper as a ship, which puts them on par with TIE Fighter Pilot. In my opinion, both are very good ships. Stormtrooper, or Death Trooper and Shore Trooper, excuse me, they're both like linchpins inside of this Iden team. I think that they're almost nailed on starters in every single iteration of it. 
Even in 3v3 at times, I think they're amazing. Death Trooper has a buff dispel. He's got Death Mark, Daze, you know, Shore Trooper, pre-taunt, and he can activate his own taunt. So a lot of different mechanics that make these guys super useful. Excuse me there. Um, yeah, I just, I think that they're a step above TIE Fighter Pilot because they do get used a lot more and that elevates them in turn, even though he's a requirement, the amount of times that they get used is to me, you know, significant. All right, this is a hot take. I'm going to pause here for a second while the comments start flowing in, but Colonel Stark, Range Trooper, and Dark Trooper. I actually struggled with these three. I was trying to figure out what way to rank them and I kind of landed right here that they're all even. Colonel Stark is the best fifth man for an Aiden team or a Veers team. He doesn't have that leader tag, which means he can work with Aiden. He's got a dispel buffs on the primary target for his AoE. He has defense down. He's got additional buffs. And in his even in his uh, unique ability here, they have armor penetration, which just makes them just makes the Imperial Troopers so much better. For me personally, guys, where I think I'm where I kind of end up landing with this is that when you take away Veers and you take away Aiden, you don't have any places to use these characters, right? I mean, when you really sit there, you stop, you think about it. Outside of those two characters, there's no way to utilize Star Trooper, Range Trooper, Colonel Star. Imperial Remnant Tag is a joke. We're, we're going to pretend it just doesn't exist for this video because there's not even five of them. They're way too specific. It's not that good of a team. So just, per, guys, it, no. Okay, stop saying it. It doesn't, it, it, no. Um, that's the thing, though. As good as they are inside of that Veers team, without him, it, it's not like they're useful in other ways without him. Same thing with Ivan, so they need to drop on that list. All right, we've got 8th Brother and 7th Sister here. Um, oh, I didn't mention this, though. So Range Trooper and Colonel Stark can go Aiden or Veers. Just um, Range almost got voted higher than these two. I will say that. Let me go back here for a second. I almost did put range at a tier higher. The reason I didn't is because Dark Trooper's punch is so good. And in 3v3, I find myself using Dark Trooper more than Range Trooper. So that's why I have them on that even playing field is there's just equal uses across each of them. All right, so Inquisitors here, Seventh Sister, Eighth Brother. I have them here simply because I think that they are they are very good, right? Don't Don't get me wrong. They are good. For me, where I think they lose their value is they really just get used with Inquisitors. They, they have the online force user tag. They've got the Empire tag, but so do the rest of them, right? They all share those same tags. You know, mechanics-wise, I think they all bring different things to the table. So they're the two that I've placed down here because in the next tier, you've got two pilots. You've got fifth brother. You've got second sister. Second sister, her ship is much easier to obtain, and she's the only pilot of it where fifth brother is dependent upon Grand Inquisitor. The reason I have them ranked together, though, is that fifth brother has the best leadership outside of Grand Inquisitor and Reva. So when I was kind of doing this and this with them, I decided to kind of put them together, leave them in the same tier. You know, they're both good. They're both pilots, you know, moving on. All right, so now we have ninth sister, right? The fattest of the bunch. She is an amazing tank. She's so good. I think with Lord Vader, she really shines because she's the unaligned force user. She's Empire, a, an additional tank, just something to kind of make that team stand out a little bit more. She's a character that I am really looking forward to gearing up and placing inside of my Lord Vader team. I'm going to be completely honest with that, guys. I cannot wait to use her with Lord Vader. Um... Because I think when you get Reva, Reva's going to kick her to the curb in every game mode. That you're going to, you know, if you're going to run Territory Wars with Grand Inquisitor lead, if they ever fix Reva, you know, Ninth Sister is still going to get kicked to the curb and we're throwing Reva in that team. So anyway, that's why we have Ninth Sister here. She just has way more uses than the rest of these because she's a tank. And that leads us into tanks with Royal Red Sausage. So uh, Royal Guard here, guys. He is the tank of tanks. Just massive meat shield in that Lord Vader squad. Um, he's got health sharing capabilities. He just, he just a really good tank. The reason I have him a step above Ninth Sister, he's a pilot, a part of that Emperor's shuttle. He's a Sith Eternal requirement, and you really do need him in that Lord Vader team. So there's you know those uses start adding up. 
as a tank, he's kind of lackluster because he doesn't have a pre-taunt. So outside of the Lord Vader team, you're really dependent upon players dropping into their, you know, below 50% health or the other case being that, you know, he gets a turn and he can force his taunt out. Um, just, to, you know, he's an okay character, but once you get the, to higher levels, that's where you're using him and that's why he's kind of lower on the list. Still a fantastic um you know, t you know, character, especially because of his ship. All right, Moff Gideon, he's pretty low on this list, guys. He's a luxury plug and play. That's the way I like to view Moff Gideon. You can use him with Veers. You can't use him with Aiden. Um, I, you know, he has the Imperial Remnant. Again, that tag doesn't exist. The biggest thing for me, I think everybody loves to hype him up because he's so fast. But I, somebody put this in the comments section. I forget who it was, and I, but I want to give a huge shout out because I thought it was the most perfect way to describe Gideon. Gideon is simply a crutch for your Piet not being fast enough. And that is an amazing, amazing way to put it. He's luxury. He's a great character. When you have him, you'll probably find a way to use him. But if you're missing him you will find ways to exist without him. And I think that's the difference. That when you're missing somebody like Piet, you are missing like a whole piece of a puzzle. I am missing Moff Gideon and I find ways to still beat my opponents. Like it's, I just, I don't think he has that, you know, I'm recognizing that he's a good character, but he's luxury at best. He's not a requirement for anything yet. So he definitely needs to be farther down the list. Which means Iden Versio has got to go above Moff Gideon. She has the leadership for all those leftover Imperial troopers, right? She kind of glues them together. And her ship, the TIE Defender, is amazing. This is an amazing ship. I mean, even at low stars and low gear, it's a fantastic addition to the Empire fleet. It's allowed us to split that fleet in two. Um, yeah, I really think it's a great, you know, she's a great addition to the game. She is not necessary for anything. She's not a necessary farm. So I do need to rate her a little bit lower on the list because, you know, requirements will take over, but her being a pilot is really helping her, um, position on this, you know, listing, which puts Veers a step above Iden Versio, even though he's not a pilot, he's a requirement for Sith Eternal, which is helping his case and I'll say this, I think the Aiden team is a more versatile offensive defensive team where Veers, I think, takes the cake is that there's a lot more upward range of teams that General Veers can beat that I think Aiden Versio would struggle against. One of those being Lord Vader. That Aiden troopers will not ever beat Lord Vader, but Veers' you know, troopers can. The other thing with you know Veers that I really like is that when you build that team, I mean, it's just, it's, yeah, he just, uh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I don't need to explain it any more than that. It's the offensive uses for him that, in my opinion, push him to a level that Aiden is not at. As good as she is in GAC, just think Piet, you know, or sorry, Veers is just a step above her. All right, Mara Jade. Emperor's Handle, I initially had her higher on the list, but I had to, I had to move her down. Without the Emperor, she really doesn't have any uses. Now, with the Emperor, she's the reason that you can use Darth Vader in so many other teams is because Mara Jade is with Emperor Palpatine. Uh, they're kind of a duo, right? They're a one-two punch together. You don't ever run one without the other. And Emperor Palpatine is pretty high on this list, so she needs to go there as well because of that use that she brings that team. She's a Starkiller requirement. And I think it really just shows how good she is right here. Again, you can use her with Empire. You can use her in a Starkiller team. A lot of ways that Mara Jade can find uses. So I needed to put her above Veers simply because the teams that she can go in are, you know, phenomenal, right? All right, we got Grand Moff Tarkin. Now you guys got to know he hates Alderaan. He is a fleet commander and he's a requirement for two different Galactic Legends for Sith Eternal and Lord Vader. So him being a fleet commander needed for two GLs, he's got to be on this list somewhere. He's actually a pretty decent flex character in terms of, you know, where you can use him in PVE. Um, you know, you can run him with Emperor Palpatine in like uh, territory battles to some good effect. Um, 
I don't know. I The reason I have him above Mario Jade, it's not much. It really comes down to the fact that the Executrix is such a dominant fleet that... If you had to ask me to give up Mara Jade or to give up my Executrix, I'd have to pick Mara Jade. That I could find other ways to use Emperor Palpatine and Starkiller. I cannot find, like, the Executrix is just that important right now. It's a great fleet. And, again, he's needed for two GLs. All right, Thrawn, a step above Tarkin because you've got a lot more uses with Thrawn. Thrawn still sees a lot of use in my teams. He's definitely lost a lot of his step when Fracture got taken out. Again, this is going way back, but when Fracture stopped working on Galactic Legends, Thrawn lost a lot of his, what's the word I want to use here? Like a, a lot of his usefulness went down the tubes at that point, but he still has more uses than Tarkin. He does have a ship. The Chimera, you know, you could argue one way or the other that the Chimera or Executrix is better. I think I give executrix the edge with pure empire but that if you're an early game player and you had to say what's better for me to use hound's tooth with chimera or executrix i'm gonna tell you chimera all day long because of the healing right it's got the heal here um it's got this ability right the insta kill where you're gonna recover all of your uh you know health and protection on the targeted fleet you put Houndstooth with the Executrix, or Executrix, Chimera, excuse me, and you're going to solo a lot of teams. Like, you can really solo teams there. So, you know, Thrawn just a step above Tarkin there. All right, hard to stomach. Hopefully the guys get to play on words. Uh, Grand Inquisitor here. He is a pilot for the Scythe, which is a fantastic ship, and he's the one that you're going to be waiting on to unlock that, right? That you, you know, you're going to get Fifth Brother before you get Grand Inquisitor. The... He's definitely, I had him higher on the list until Reva came in because Reva right now is still better than his lead in all game modes, which is ridiculous because he's supposed to be better in Territory War. But again, broken Reva, broken record. I get it. I say it a lot, but want to continue pushing it to you guys. He's a great character. Uh, I have him much higher than the rest of the Inquisitors because similar to the way that Mon Mothma kind of molds all those rebel fighters together, that's what he does with those Inquisitors. He really gives them a lead that, when it's just fifth brother, I'm not that concerned about Inquisitors. I don't even really think twice about what team I'm going to use. When Grand Inquisitor is there, we start having to think a little bit more because he does have a lot of good mechanics, and it's a very good team. Emperor Palpatine is the next, you know, Papa Palp. He is higher on this list. He gets a lot of use without Mara Jade. That's why he's up here. He's also got his ship, right, the Emperor's Shuttle. Got one of the best Empire leaderships excuse me, uh, out there. And I think for me, that dual tag of Empire and Sith really helps him. So there's a, a lot of different ways. He's a requirement for two Galactic Legends as well with um, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren and Sith Eternal. So a lot of uses for him. Again, a very good kid. Just one of those characters that I think if Mara Jade had more uses, she could be much higher on this list because she's the one everybody's like, oh, she's what... But Palpatine is the glue that keep you know, that brings Mara Jade in, right? Like Palpatine's the magnet that's pulling Mara Jade to make her good. So I think that he deserves the shout to be this high on the list compared to her. All right. Yeah. This force crushed my soul that Darth Vader's here. He's fantastic. Probably one of the most transformative characters in the game for a very long time. I think re recently it seemed that he's taking a back seat, especially in the end game where he's supposed to go inside of like a Dr. Aphra team or a Lord Vader team. You know, you're seeing less and less times where Darth Vader's still going in and soloing characters. And that just force crushed my soul. It really did. His ship is great. You know, TIE Advance is a fantastic ship. Um, I just think that unfortunately... There's some characters in here that have a little bit more use than Darth Vader. And that next one is Admiral Piet, right? You know, intensify the firepower. The Executor is the second most important... It's the second best fleet in the game. Probably, like, it, it, it is Bounty Hunters, but he, he's Empire. He's Imperial Trooper, right? He makes that Empire, the Imperial Trooper team tick with the Emperor's Trap. Um, Yeah, I really think that Piet... 
just the other thing too with Piet guys. I don't know if people like recognize this as much. The Emperor's Trap works outside of Imperial Troopers, so you could use like in Rise of the Empire or not Rise of the Empire. Sorry, rewind. In Geonosis territory battles, one of the things you can do a lot of. I mean, you can do it in Rise of the Empire too, but just especially Geonosis, I did this. You run like Emperor Palpatine, Vader, Mara Jade, Piet, and then like a tank or even just Thrawn. The other team's never going to get a turn. The Emperor's Trap is going to build, and that team, right with Emperor's Trap, you're getting offense and potency. So if you're running a turn meter train on the enemy team with Piet, you know, with Piet in there, you're going to get so much turn meter, so much potency that it just it really, really, really makes it easy for you to, you know, clear waves. So the top two guys, hopefully you know the order they're going as of right now, time of recording. Lord Vader. Now, you guys will notice that title card's kind of interesting. Tide, Ray with win rate. I People are not going to like this, but it's the truth. Lord Vader, if you combine his 5v5 and 3v3 like success rates and then would divide by 2 and do the same thing with Ray, their 5v5 and 3v3 even out to be roughly the same as far as they're the two toughest characters to beat statistically in the game right now. Now, this is the point I'm going to make. I will say this. But we do need to recognize it. That is because there are off-meta counters to them that people try. But that's the whole point, I think, of why like people underestimate Lord Vader. Everybody always thinks your bounty hunters or your Imperial Troopers or whatever is going to work. And then it doesn't. And then you're stuck using a Galactic Legend to get through him. And that's hilarious to me. Because you just threw away a really good team trying to clear Lord Vader. You know, oh, Lord Failure. Well, he just got a hold. So shut your mouth. I will, and again, I don't have Ray, and I still think that, you know, we made my whole video about that. You guys know there's a whole Ray video, but they're two Galactic Legends that give people the most trouble because they constantly try to underestimate them because they think they're trash, not realizing they're actually really, really good characters. But top of the list, third sister, Reva, she is so broken right now. Hopefully they put out a nerf and really fix her kit because it's just way too good. Right? It really is way too good. She's just doing so much damage right now. Um, the thing is, I just don't know how to fix her yet. I don't even think they know how to fix her. But she has to be number one on this list. She is just performing so well at such a high level that you can't not put her at number one here. So that's the list. But we have two honorable mentions, guys. So honorable mentions are Maul and Starkiller. So Maul... Because of the use with Lord Vader, I really think he needs to be on this list as part of that empire because his kit is the one that's really juicing Lord Vader's ultimate. The other thing I really think that Maul with that empire with Lord Vader is that even in 3v3, that's still happening. So he definitely needs to be on this list as far as mentioned with the empire because of Lord Vader. Starkiller gets mentioned here because... He really synergizes well with Emperor Palpatine and Mara Jade. But also, he should have an Empire tag because that's what he was. He was Empire. He was Darth Vader's apprentice. How does he not have an Empire tag? I, I, more infuriating than Director Krennic not having an Imperial Trooper tag. Starkiller, this version of him, should have an Empire tag because he was... Oh, I could... Oh. Mm. oh. Whew. That, that escalated quickly. Um, no, guys, seriously. He should have an Empire tag. He... The true honorable mention here is Starkiller because, I mean, he goes hand-in-hand hand with Mara Jade and Emperor Palpatine, but, I mean, his, his, look at this, look, you tell me who that is, I don't need to tell you guys who that is, that is Darth Vader, okay, that is, that is Darth Vader right here, oh, he should have an Empire tag, let's end it on a happy note, guys, send you home with a king, that's the list, let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below, as always, smash that subscribe button, leave likes, leave comments, guys. We want to hit 5,000. I'll see you on the next video. May the force be with you. Cheers.